Okay, really quick before I start the video, look how cute my ladder bookshelf is that I got from Target for my birthday. Those are a bunch of library books I have checked out, the books that I showed in my haul last week, and then some art supplies and my BTS VT cosmetics lotions. But it's so cute! I love it! It's next to all my K-pop albums. Okay, onto the video. Hello everyone, it's Brianna. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about books again. <laughs> this video is going to be about the Animal Crossing readathon which has just wrapped up a couple of days ago when New Horizons came out. I was supposed to read five books plus as a bonus read one of the choices that the hosts picked and while I was doing really well for the first half of the readathon. Um, towards the last couple of days, I basically just fell off track and then stopped reading altogether and I didn't read anything, I think, from like the 15th on. So that's why I failed. I could have finished, I didn't. I didn't push hard enough, but I think that's okay, right? Reading shouldn't be a chore, it should be a hobby. So I'm still really proud of myself and happy about having finished four books anyways. I really liked a lot of the ones that I read. There was one that I gave one star to, which we'll talk about <laughs> in a second. But overall, this readathon, I don't know, faded. I, I, it was lots of five stars, a four star. Um, I got a quarter way through another book that I think is going to be like at least a four star for me. So I, I think it was a successful time. All right, let's talk about it. So the first book that I read for the Animal Crossing readathon was for the KK Slider prompt, which is basically to read a book that has musical elements or to listen to an audiobook. I ended up choosing The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a book written in a slam poetry style about, about and by a character named Siomara, who is a teenager living under the roof with a very religious mother and her perfect twin and her father who's kind of not so involved in her life and it just kind of chronicles her finding her own identity, her becoming more comfortable sharing certain parts of her life with her family and the growing changes in the relationship with her and her mother and I loved it. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I was so incredibly moved by it. I did um, check out the audiobook from my local library and it was beautiful. I highly recommend if you can get your hands on the audiobook to listen to it along with the reading of the actual book because Elizabeth Acevedo herself narrates the audiobook and it is so beautiful. I'm really picky with audiobooks. I never listen to them because I I just don't like voices besides the one in my head reading to me but because The Poet X is written in a slam poetry style I thought it would probably be for the best for me to listen to the audiobook and it was, I was right. Everyone who has read this book and listened to the audiobook re recommends the audiobook and I'm one of those people. It, it's just, it was amazing. It's a really short read, a really short listen to. I think it's about just over three hours and for a book that's so short, a story that's so short to have been so moving to me, I cared so deeply about all of the characters, so deeply about like what was going to happen to Siomara, how her family relationships were going to change, her friendships, her love interests, uh, all of that. I was engaged. I was crying, laughing, it was, oh my god, it was beautiful. I just, I cannot wait to read more of Elizabeth Acevedo's works because this one was gorgeous. I think this is my first true, absolute 5 out of 5 star, like one of my favorite books of the year maybe. Um, it's March, probably early to say that, but it just, oh my god, it was beautiful, it was amazing. And I highly recommend anyone out there to read this book, listen to the audiobook. It, it's so lovely, I don't know what else to say. The, I, I mm, emotion. Mm. The second book that I ended up reading for the readathon was for the prompt Rossetti. This one was a pretty open prompt because um, just like Mr. Rossetti, it was just to save. So it was to read any book of your choice with while using a bookmark to save your spot. So I decided just to pick Circe by Madeline Miller, which I've owned for um, a couple months now, but I just never got around to reading it. And I was really excited for it because I grew up really liking Greek mythology. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Circe is a retelling, or I don't know, yeah, a retelling of a bunch of Greek myth myths from the perspective of Circe and it kind of retells the story of Circe from her viewpoint and it was incredibly beautifully written. If you have read The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, you'll know that her prose is gorgeous. The way that she uses language, the way that she writes is is beautiful. I would reread some passages multiple times, not because I would un misunderstand them or not get what was going on, but just because the language was so beautiful. I wanted to read it multiple times, so it really just like got into my soul. It was so lovely to read. It, I think, is a very 
fun and interesting retelling to be able to take these traditionally male-centered stories and read them from the perspective of the women who kind of propped them up during that time and it just I don't know if you're not into Greek mythology I feel like it might be boring for you because it does require a little bit of uh, prior knowledge of the stories because it, it doesn't give you like the world building or I don't know if that's the right word it doesn't give you the context necessarily of what's going on it kind of just like name drops a bunch of very famous Greek figures Greek myth mythical figures and you kind of need to know who they are beforehand to really enjoy and appreciate their placement in the story but I highly recommend it for anyone who is interested in or likes Greek mythology. I think it was just a beautifully told story and I got through it I think in like a day or two. It was just so so amazing. Also five out of five stars. A great start to the readathon. The third book that I read um, was Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. This is the sequel to Carry On, which I had read uh, last month. This book is about Simon Snow um, going on a road trip across the United States with his friends Penelope and his boyfriend Baz. That's it. One out of five stars is what I rated it. I thought it was so incredibly boring. Um, I pushed through to finish it, I think, in like a day or two. Not because I thought it was interesting, like with the Poet X and, and Circe, I finished it really quickly because I was so obsessed and I needed to know what happened next. I pushed through Wayward Sun just so I could get it out of the way so I could read something better that I thought was actually good. The same complaints that I had with Carry On, I, this sequel doesn't need to exist. Not a single thing happens in it. The characters are so flat, the writing is childish to the point where I was like, is this a book for young adults or a book for like five year olds and, and, and this is like the book that your parents read to you to try to get you into reading chapter books. I just, it's, oh, it's so boring and the relationship is badly written in my opinion. It's, it's all tell and no show. It'll just be Baz being like, I love Simon, but sometimes I hate him because I used to hate him and now I don't and I love him. That's it. That's the writing style. That's how it all goes out. Penelope Buns, most annoying goddamn character I've read this year. I had complained to you guys before about Ever Wong from Love Bo Taipei being annoying. I apologize to Ever Wong. She's a great character. Penelope Buns is the goddamn worst character I've read this year. She is so irritating. I have never read a character who's a protagonist, by the way. She's one of the one of the main characters. We read a lot of her POV chapters in this book. She's obnoxious she's super mean to all of her friends she's condescending she's a huge asshole who doesn't care about any of her friends feelings she only cares about herself she's incredibly selfish and nothing changes she's like this the entire book the entire book all she does is talk down to people and dismiss their emotions their feelings and pushes people and bullies them into doing what she wants and then i'm supposed to care about anything that happens to her i legit was like if she died, I would be happy. Reading through the first like POV chapter with her, I was tired already. Oh my god, I didn't like this book. So <laughs> um, apparently there's going to be a third book. The book ended on a cliffhanger, which why? Not a single thing happened in the second book. So why did it need to end on a cliffhanger? I just, why do I keep reading books by Rainbow Rowell? I don't know. This is the third one and I still didn't like it. So I, <laughs> uh, ooh, okay. Um, the final book I read was The Tea Dragon Society and this was for the prompt. It was just like the bonus one where you read a book that one of the hosts chose and I picked Tea Dragon Society which Medusa Reads had chosen as her pick for the readathon and it was so gorgeous. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It's a short little graphic novel and um, I'll insert here while I'm talking about it some footage of the pictures and the art in the book. It was absolutely beautifully illustrated. And this is a little story about this girl named Greta and a girl named Minette and they kind of enter this world of tea dragon raising and they learn about the importance of upholding cultural practices and they kind of just become friends, fall in love. It's just a sweet little whimsical story about tea dragons and friendship and love and it's so cute and it's really short. So I don't want to say too much about it because I feel like anything I say is going to be a spoiler but it, it oh my god it's so freaking cute and beautiful as you guys see from all the footage I just put of the book and the story is very whimsical and sweet and I am definitely going to pick up the sequel. Um, I think it's called the Tea Dragon Festival. It follows a different set of characters but I think the third one that comes out later this year follows um, these characters in the first book again and I can't wait. 
but I I loved it if you want a quick easy read something that's uplifting if you're having a really stressful time right now which I know tons of people are um, then definitely definitely check this book out it just lifted my spirits and made me feel so light it no oh, it was so cute and lovely and warm and fuzzy ah loved it and that's it for this video those were all the books that I read and I I don't know what else to say I hope you guys are all doing well staying safe um, staying healthy as much as you can and I love you all see you again next time bye